Well, that was a rather unexpected end to my Sunday down at Cafe in a Machine. Also, you may have noticed these pipes sat here. Now, you're going to have to stay tuned to find out what they are if you don't already know already. But let's face it, you all are fully aware what these are, and I hope you're as excited as I am. They are going to be fitted to the car on Saturday, and then a week on Saturday I will upload the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Do not miss it, because I am so, so buzzing. But anyway, what happened to my car and why was it being loaded onto the back of a flatbed? Well, it was a Sunday. It was the first time Caffeine Machine opened its doors um, in around four months due to COVID. So myself and a group of friends jumped in the cars and we headed down. Now, we were there and I was just, I was buzzing because as a regular uh, guest at Cafe and Machine. Uh, I usually go there every Sunday. Uh, after having four months withdrawal symptoms of <laughs> not going, not visiting, not seeing some cool cars, I was very eager to show off the modifications that I'd done to the car during lockdown. And of course, I gave it a clean as well. So it was looking incredible. And uh, got there a little bit early, parked in prime position right in front of the house, had a great time, had some food, had some drinks. And uh, I said to the guys, let's head off. It's the end of our slot. Let's head off go get some food. Yep, no problem. Jumped in my car, pushed the start stop button and the car wouldn't start. It was turning over, but it wouldn't start. It sounded like a fueling issue. So thought, well, a bit strange. Um, we were advised to wait half an hour to see if it would fix itself. Uh, and it didn't essentially. So <laughs> rather embarrassingly, because it was rammed that day as well. It was a lovely day as well. Weather was beautiful. In front of everyone, uh, a group of us had to push the car out of the way around the back of the pub. Um, and await the arrival of the tow truck. So we then overstayed. We essentially, um, we were there longer than our allocated slot. So then the next slotted uh, amount of people, the, the next amount of guests, I suppose, they started to arrive at around four o'clock, followed by that massive Nissan flatbed with all the lights flashing. And oh my, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> Again, I am there all the time, so I think I'm going to be remembered by that. Um, but I mentioned to him about the fuel pump message and how I had changed the sensor only three months ago. So he put his fingers around the sensor and uh, it was covered in fuel. So the part had failed. Now, they say buy, buy cheap, buy twice. And to be fair, I know that. Um, I just mainly bought it off eBay, it's probably a crap part, which explains why it failed. I mainly bought it to see if it would fix the problem, and then I did plan on buying the OEM part at a later date. However, it failed before I could do so. So I have gone straight out and bought the genuine BMW fuel rail sensor for this car. Now this is the reason my car won't start, and is the reason I ended up on the back of a flatbed. So here is the OEM part, and uh, yeah, I just need to get this fitted to the car. I don't think that's gonna focus. I need to get that fitted to the car, and then, fingers crossed, well, in theory as well, it should start. So let me lift the bonnet, show you the old fuel rail sensor, and then I'll go about in installing it to the car. Fingers crossed, it starts. So then let's take a little look underneath the bonnet. The car obviously hasn't moved. Uh, it's literally been sat here since the uh, tow truck dumped it here on Sunday. Now under here is my very dirty, naturally aspirated uh, V8. And uh, just here, you will see that that is the culprit. That is my rather cheap and uh, turns out broken fuel rail sensor now. It's probably dried up a bit, but it's a bit dirty, but it was essentially leaking from there. So that is the reason why my bloody car wouldn't start. <laughs> so, right, what I'm going to do, because uh, I can't wait any longer, I'm too excited to get out in my car and drive it again, I need to remove this airbox to give me better, better access to that, and then swap it over for the OEM part, and then, fingers crossed, it starts. <laughs>
then, new sensor in. Quite an easy job to be fair, it's very, very easily accessible. The hardest part was getting the uh, connector out. So I guess now is just a moment of truth as to will it start. And I genuinely haven't tried this. So uh, all I can do is cross my fingers. I'm hoping the keys are somewhere in the car. Where's my... Right, I'm gonna turn the ignition on first. Yeah, it's warning me about a low battery. That's fine. Um, in neutral, let's give it a go then. Oh, okay. So it started. I have a check engine light still. I need to change, uh, turn that off with my Kali adapter. Let's go and have a look. Check for any leaks. All seems good. So uh, I shall check this over in the next five, 10 minutes or so. However, job well done, I think. The M3 looks like it's back and working again. Happy days. There we have it then, guys, back from a very successful test drive. And I'm so grateful that the car is now back on the road and is running how it should. That part is so easy to uh, swap out. I am very grateful. Well, first of all, I had practice because I've done it beforehand with that cheap, nasty eBay part. But I'm so grateful that it's so easy and accessible. So you don't have to pay a mechanic top dollar to replace such a simple job. It literally took probably 10 minutes once you get the air box out of the way. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that's over and done with. I'm glad that the car is back on the road and fingers crossed I don't have any more incidents where the car shows me up and embarrasses me like that. So much so that I have to leave the venue on the back of a flatbed. However, oh well, doesn't matter. I'm just so grateful that the car is back on the road. You live and learn, of course, buy cheap, buy twice. I already knew that. Like I said, I was planning on changing the part out anyway. However, it broke before I got to do so. So, Oh well, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my future upcoming content with the M3, now it's back on the road. And of course, you, you guys had that little teaser of what is lying in the back seats and through the center of the car. You guys obviously pretty much know what that is. So stay tuned for that. I cannot wait to get them on the car. I am so excited. So stay tuned for that video. And of course, make sure you show your support by heading over to my new website, which is benrainautomotive.co.uk. I worked very hard on that website. I sell things like stickers, t-shirts, and I have a new product dropping very soon. So head on over, have a browse, and maybe buy a thing or two. I would really appreciate it, but no obligation to do so. I would also appreciate some feedback on my website. Website. it really does mean a lot anyway guys thank you once again for watching and i'll see you in the next one